Do you know that the DNA of modern Greeks hides a secret that rewrites what we think about Europe itself? Do you know that three quarters of Greek ancestry may come from lands far older than Europe's classical age? And if that's true, then what does it mean to call Greece the birthplace of Western civilization? Let's follow the evidence, not legend, to see who the Greeks really are. For centuries, schoolbooks have told the story of Greece as the foundation of Europe, democracy, philosophy, architecture, art. But DNA tells a deeper tale, one that begins long before Plato or Pericles, before even the word Europe existed. Modern genetic research, drawn from ancient bones buried across the Aegean and Mediterranean, shows that the Greek people are descended from a blend of three great ancestral sources. One came from early Neolithic farmers who migrated out of Anatolia, what is now Turkey, about 9,000 years ago. Another came from Europe's first hunter-gatherers. The third came later, during the Bronze Age, when mysterious peoples from the Pontic steppe swept across Eurasia. The result was a population unique to the Aegean, part European, part Near Eastern, part steppe, and entirely Greek. When scientists sequenced DNA from Mycenaean and Minoan skeletons, two of the oldest known Greek civilizations, they found that both groups shared roughly 75% of their ancestry with early farmers from Anatolia and the Eastern Mediterranean. The other 25% came from northern steppe herders. So yes, the ancient Greeks carried both Eastern and Western blood, and their descendants still do today. Before we continue, this is the kind of truth we uncover every day on Genealogy X, where history meets DNA. Subscribe now. We post two new DNA mysteries every day, revealing how our bloodlines built the world we know. Now, the idea that Greeks are not Europeans comes from this Anatolian connection, that 75% that traces back to people who lived in lands outside what we now call Europe. But the reality is more complex. Those early Anatolian farmers were the same people who carried agriculture into all of southern Europe. They shaped the DNA of Italians, Spaniards, and southern Slavs too. So while part of Greek ancestry came from Asia Minor, that blood became the core of European identity itself. In other words, the genes that make Greeks different are also the genes that made Europe possible. Still, the question lingers. If most Greek DNA came from ancient Anatolia, what happened to the earlier Europeans who lived there before? Ancient remains from caves in Thessaly and Peloponnese show that hunter-gatherers were already there long before the Neolithic farmers arrived. Their DNA was distinct. Darker-skinned, blue-eyed people who hunted and fished across the Mediterranean coast. When the Anatolian farmers arrived, they didn't replace them. They mixed with them. That blend became the root of Hellenic identity. So when you look at a modern Greek today, you're seeing the living mosaic of Europe's first farmers, its earliest hunters, and its wandering horsemen of the north. But the surprises don't end there. When researchers compared Greek DNA with samples from ancient Egyptians, Phoenicians, and Persians, they found overlapping markers, not because Greece was conquered by them, but because the Aegean was a crossroads of trade and migration for thousands of years. The ports of Crete, Rhodes, and Corinth were DNA highways connecting three continents. Goods moved, ideas moved, and genes moved too. That's why the Greek genome today carries traces of Levantine, Anatolian, and even minor North African ancestry. Echoes of sailors, traders, and refugees whose stories history never wrote down. Does that make Greeks less European or more universal? If your ancestry connects three continents, maybe you're not the exception to Europe. Maybe you're its blueprint. In 2017, a major study led by Harvard geneticists sequenced 15 Bronze Age genomes from the Aegean. Their conclusion, modern Greeks are direct descendants of Mycenaeans, with only small shifts in their genetic makeup over three and a half millennia. In plain terms, the people who wrote Homer's epics and built the Parthenon share overwhelming genetic continuity with the people living in Athens and Crete today. 
Few other nations can claim that level of unbroken descent. Another finding startled historians. While Northern Europeans absorbed large amounts of steppe DNA from Indo-European migrations, Greece absorbed less. That's why only about one quarter of Greek DNA comes from steppe herders, compared with up to half in Northern Europe. That smaller influence preserved more of the ancient Eastern Mediterranean genetic signature. So when someone says Greeks are not Europeans, the truth is that they're older Europeans, the version of Europe before the great northern migrations reshaped the continent. Consider language. Greek belongs to the Indo-European family, yet it's one of its earliest and most independent branches. Linguists think the Indo-European element entered Greece with those same steppe migrants who contributed that remaining 25% of DNA. So even in speech, we see the same pattern as in genes, a deep foundation from the Near East, blended with a newer northern layer. That mix created the voice of Homer, the philosophy of Aristotle, and the mathematics of Pythagoras, a civilization born from fusion, not isolation. Modern Greeks, of course, have continued to mix across time. Roman rule, Slavic migrations, Ottoman centuries and Mediterranean trade all left faint but measurable genetic signatures. Yet through all of it, the core composition remained remarkably stable. DNA tests of present-day Greeks cluster almost exactly with Bronze Age Aegeans, closer than any other European nation to its ancient form. So if someone asks, are modern Greeks really the descendants of the ancients? The answer is yes and science backs it up. Still, the phrase 75% non-European triggers debate. What does European even mean genetically? The borders of continents are political, not biological. In deep time, there was never a Europe separate from Asia. There was only the continuous landmass where people moved, traded, married, and adapted. Ancient DNA reveals that identity has never been a single color on a map its gradients, overlapping circles, endless exchange. Maybe the real question isn't whether Greeks are Europeans, but whether any of us can draw a line between us and them that DNA will respect. Would you want to know if your bloodline crosses continents? Would that change the way you think about who you are or where you belong? There's another twist that few expect. Some of the same Anatolian farmers, whose genes dominate Greek ancestry, also gave rise to the earliest civilizations of the Near East, including parts of ancient Mesopotamia. So when Western history says that Greece inherited ideas from the East, writing, astronomy, trade, it wasn't just cultural borrowing. It was blood remembering blood. The exchange between East and West was never a meeting of strangers. It was the reunion of distant cousins. Archaeogenetics has also traced small but detectable links between Greek populations and ancient Armenians, Georgians, and even Iranians. These aren't modern migrations, but deep echoes of prehistoric movements across Anatolia and the Caucasus. The story they tell is one of constant motion. Waves of people shaping, merging, evolving, until one group on the Aegean coast became known as the Greeks. So... 75% Anatolian, 25% steppe, and local European. That's the recipe. But the numbers aren't labels. They're memory. They show how the first Europeans were built from the mixing of worlds. In that sense, the Greeks aren't not European. They are the living proof that Europe itself was never a single origin, but a conversation between East and West that has never stopped. If you've enjoyed exploring how DNA overturns the myths of history, subscribe to Genealogy X. We uncover two DNA mysteries every day that reveal who we really are. So, are Greeks Europeans? The DNA says partly, but they're also Anatolian, Mediterranean, and global. The Aegean has always been a bridge, never a border. Every island, every stone, every strand of Greek DNA carries the memory of journeys that began before Europe had a name. And maybe that's the greatest secret of all, that what we call Greek is not the edge of Europe, but its beginning. Because when we follow the code written in our blood, we discover that no civilization stands alone. The story of the Greeks is the story of all of us.
a map without borders, a lineage without limits, and a reminder that every drop of blood carries an ocean of history waiting to be rediscovered. Waiting to be rediscovered.